The role of a pharmacist has been evolving over the years. It used to be your the old man in the white lab coat at your local pharmacy filling your medications. But pharmacists have really evolved. There's so many different opportunities available to pharmacists, um, whether it be hospital, retail, um, and emergency preparedness. Our pharmacy team has done a great job and an amazing job. Um, they're, they're well experienced. The pharmacists are invaluable. Uh, I literally would not go out the door without them anymore. The pharmacist is key to understanding your medications on a day-to-day -day basis. They're absolutely essential to understanding the medications and how they work uh, when it comes to preparing for a disaster. You need every team member. We had an entire functioning pharmacy. We were able to uh, do a case in the operating room, send that case patient to the post-anesthesia recovery unit, order medications on our EMR system, have them transmitted to our pharmacy uh, within our field hospital, have that drug available for pickup by the nurses, and it functioned truly like a hospital. You can't do that with only physicians. You can't do that with only nurses. Everybody has an equal role to play. There's not one role that's more significant than the other in a disaster setting. When a, one of the physicians orders a medication while we're deployed someplace, uh, and the pharmacist says, we don't have that, but they know what will, will serve in its place. So while the physician's first choice might be one drug, the pharmacist can provide the, 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 this depth of knowledge that, that uh, there are other drugs available that can satisfy that, that function. And they're completely uh, indispensable now. There's no, there's no way I would deploy without a pharmacist. There's a lot of conditions here in the United States, such as um, an anthrax outbreak, where you need to get doxycycline and Cipro into people within 48 hours. I mean, who knows better how to dispense medications quickly than a pharmacist? Um, so it's just evolved so much, and the opportunities are just vast. So I'm Jennifer Sawicki. I'm a pharmacist with the Rhode Island Disaster Medical Assistance Team. Today we're in our light field aid station, otherwise known as an LFAS. This is something that we typically take on a deployment in state. We have all sorts of wonderful medical equipment, um, splints, bandage wraps, band-aids, um, alcohol prep pads, you name it. We have our Pelican, um, which has all the ACLS medications in it. We kind of fall into the same category as the National Guard. So your job is protected if you actually do become, uh, if you're actually deployed with the federal team. For Hurricane Katrina, my team happened to be outside the Superdome. We treated everything from, you know, dehydration to someone with gunshot wounds. I mean, you have to be prepared for almost anything. Pharmacists play an important role in that. You help along with the doctors and the nurse practitioners to decide what substitution with what we have will be best for this patient. Preparedness uh, means a variety of things. Number one, uh, do you have a supply of water? Do you have a supply of canned goods? Things in your basement that you have immediate access to. Uh, and food and water is probably the most important uh, things. People should have a weak supply of water or a weak supply of canned goods that exists somewhere uh, within their house. They need flashlights, batteries, an extra supply, hopefully a week of medications. So many people uh, don't take the time to talk to their pharmacist to say, which, which medication is the one that I can't live without? Some come to mind to anyone. Insulin, if you, don't, if you go without insulin, there's going to be a problem. Insulin is kept refrigerated. But what maybe people don't understand, if you lose your power, Insulin that's unrefrigerated is still good for up to uh, 28 days in some circumstances. The most important thing you can have in a disaster when you have nothing else is information. So information about your medications will go a long way to make sure your care is not interrupted, that your chronic condition does not become acute. Health records are a very important thing. Uh, if you have an extensive medical history, having a copy of that uh, within your disaster supply or a small backpack uh, is important. Cash. People don't think that uh, credit cards uh, don't work in a disaster, but let me tell you, they don't. Uh, and ATMs don't work as well. So you should have at least $100 in cash available. From a family perspective, you need to have something in place for meetings. First things that go down in a disaster zone is always communications. Uh, so you shouldn't rely on your cell phone, you shouldn't rely on a landline. You need to be able to have a plan within your family that you have a staging point within a disaster or some contact uh, method that you can get your family together at a reasonable place that's safe uh, and efficient. And there should be backups to this because your original disaster meeting point may not be accessible. Our accountability is a huge thing, making sure that all these folks are safe, making sure they're fed and and housed and warm and dry and if, and if a family trusts me to take their family member away for two weeks to go to a disaster, 
I, it's my responsibility to make sure I bring them all back. It really humbles me that uh, these folks will all do all these things all year long, doing their regular jobs for free, and then drop everything and and uh, and leave town to help somebody they, that they don't know. I'm I'm amazed. This public service has been a collaborative message from the University of Rhode Island College of Pharmacy and the University of Rhode Island Film Media Department.